Hello all, my name is uh, Deep Ranjan. A very good morning to all of you. Uh, so today in this video, we are going to see about uh, another classification project. The name is Brain Tumor Detection. Okay. So as the name suggests, we are going to deal with uh, like a kind of a medical images in this video. So for that, I have taken a data set. Okay. So that data set I have downloaded okay and I have uh, like uploaded in my github repository I will share you the link of this given repository in the description box so you can see that in the in this data set inside this data set two classes are there yes and no whether the person is having a brain tumor or not having a brain tumor okay so yes and no is there so coming to the coding part okay let me zoom it little bit for the clarity okay so you can see here uh, like uh, I have given the data set link here in the collab file also so what I did here uh, like I have uh, imported some of the necessary libraries first like uh, tensorflow OS numpy pandas matplotlib these things like in the like uh, from a long time we are going to we are using this kind of uh, things like uh, for our uh, like uh, project for any kind of uh, image recognition kind of a project we are going to use here so inside tensorflow everything is present like inside tensorflow keras is there inside keras image data generator and this categorical cross entropy sequential model conv 2d max pooling layer global average pooling so these things are we are going to use okay for this project so first of first things uh, what i had did here i have uh, like a taken the like a I have just assigned the path of the data okay so I have already downloaded and kept it in the Google Drive okay my drive so this is the uh, drive uh, like this is the data set path uh, that I have given here data and in also I have assigned here the path of no and yes okay no brain tumor path and yes brain tumor path okay that's I have done here so after that what I had did here uh, I have taken that like a labels uh, labels are uh, like a no and yes okay and along with the file path file path that means like uh, each images path okay we are going to take here and uh, what I did here well just uh, created a for loop here and inside that I'm taking a directory list and the classes based on the classes we are just creating a list okay uh, so uh, which file path is belong to which label okay so you can see here total uh, 253 uh, I have that sorry for that so total 253 images we have and two total 253 labels we have so what I did here uh, I have just uh, like a uh, created a series first okay by using pd dot series uh, file path and another for uh, the labels column and after that i have just concatenated it files and labels just to make a data frame okay kind of a data frame so you can see here uh, like some of the data frames example so you can see this is the file path complete file path where exactly this image is present and what in which level it is present like is in yes or yeah, no okay it's present so also i'm checking here the values like how many uh, yes and how many no values are there now no images are there right so you can see here uh, for yes we have a 155 and for no we have a 98 and after that what I have done, done here uh, just to visualizing purpose like uh, what kind of images we have okay so just did that so I have taken just a random 15 images from our uh, complete data set so this is the code for that there's nothing else just uh, uh, calling a loop here okay for loop here iterating to 0 to uh, 14 okay the upper, because the upper limit is not counted right and for each uh, iteration we are going to plot us a single image okay so you can see here 15 images are there after that what I have done uh, I have just uh, doing here a train traced split just a splitting our data set okay so first I, I have uh, like a split it our data set into train and test okay I've taken a 95% of data for the testing sorry training and 5% for the uh, testing purpose okay but uh, okay then after that what I have done uh, I have taken some of the data set for validation purpose also uh, that will uh, will help 
us to know whether our data uh, data is like a what model is overfitted or not so that will help us to understand exactly so what i did here along with the like 95 percent of the data uh, 90 percent of data i have taken for the training purpose and 10 percent as a validation so you can see here i have made like uh, just uh, printing the saves here so for training i have taken two 216 testing 13 and validation 24 and after that what i did here train test data generation okay so this is nothing else just a data generation kind of a thing like a, okay so like uh, we are creating some more data along with the uh, by using our own original images we are using because we have a very less number of images so it's a kind of a data augmentation technique is there okay so we are just creating uh, like uh, some images for our model so that our model will perform well okay nothing else for training and the testing both we are doing that so for testing we are not uh, going to use we are just uh, rescaling it but for uh, training we have done some uh, like a rotation shifting these kind of a things we have taken just a augmentation part it is nothing else and now we have creating a training or test set test set and validation set this kind of sets we are getting so for that data frame dot train new we have taken for the training and inside that two columns are present one is for, uh, for the file part and another is for labels okay so x1 x will be a file path and y value will be the labels and target size so what size i am going to take here for 224 cross 224 and by size i am using here 32 and the class mode is binary because we have only two classes here 0 and 1 okay and shuffle is equal to true random shuffling is equal to true same for the validation i have taken okay image size to 24 224 plus 224 x column will be file path y column will be labels binary class and batch size 60 here and shuffling these things we have done here nothing else okay fine so same for the test also i have mentioned here nothing else we have done and also i'm checking the like a how like a which label uh, like a is zero and which label is one okay so we have two columns only like two labels only no and yes so whatever whatever value assigned to each one so zero is assigned to no and one is assigned to yes just for the testing purpose so what i did did here okay i have used here uh, one of the transfer learning technique and for that i have using here resnet 50 v2 okay so that is a transfer learning technique that we are going to use and our model is performing well in that one only so what i did here is that we i have just uh, initialized like uh, just uh, imported it keras dot application dot rest 50 v2 taken the weights okay input size same 224 cross 224 uh, 3 is for the rgb channel include top is equal to false okay nothing else so our base model dot trainable is equal to false i have done that okay and after taking the inputs so input side is same 224 cross 224 okay and then nothing else i'm just uh, calling this input and the training is equal to false after that i'm creating one more layer that is of uh, global average pooling okay uh, most of the projects we are uh, using max pooling layer but in this one uh, global average pooling layer will work fine uh, but work better than that okay and then in the last layer uh, sorry not in the last layer before that i have used here a dropout of uh, 0.2 okay for 20 per soft ratio okay and in the output layer uh, i have mentioned about only one unit so that simply means uh, i am looking for a output in a uh, terms of 0 and 1 only okay so it will be a just a binary class classification problem it is for that we are using here activation function but if we have a multiple classes so for that we can go for the softmax here okay so just checking the model summary so you can see here uh, total number of parameters that we are going to train is only 2000 for 2049 okay and these many are already trained so actually we are using transfer learning techniques so we are going to use here the weights of the imagenet data in which this resnet model is trained like right? okay so we are going to use that weights only so 
for this model so what I did here I have uh, defined one callback method so what it will do uh, like it will save uh, the best model whichever having a best accuracy and the less loss so it will just uh, save th that model with the name of tumor classifier model dot h5 I'm compiling that, that our model and inside that passing the loss function that is of binary cross entropy optimizer wise we are using Adam mostly we are using Adam only it will works very fine good okay and matrices wise we are going to use here accuracy and then we'll do the model dot fit for here it is train generator and for validation I'm passing here val generation epochs I'm going to train here for 100 and callbacks inside this callbacks this callbacks will be passed and what was equal to 2 so you can see here I have already trained this model okay uh, I think yeah yeah I have trained this model so if you can see here my accuracy I got the accuracy of around 87 percent and validation is almost 83 so I think it's a good model okay this is a good one and loss is also close to 0.31 and validation is 0.39 so it's, it is a good model I'm just saving this model into my drive okay so that we can use this model for our flask integration and for that I have already created a video how we can deploy our deep learning model into flask one okay so using that same techniques we can uh, same technique we can deploy our model okay we can create a web page for that and all that okay and what I'm doing here uh, evaluation of the model so for that I'm just plotting right so like I, I'm just uh, like I uh, want to see like uh, how my uh, validation and the training accuracy is changing so you can see almost close to same okay I can say that close to same it is and it's a pretty good model so now the time for the model testing okay for that whatever model I have saved in my drive that's name is tumor classification classifier underscore model dot h5 I'm just loading that model okay by using tf dot keras model dot load model and matplotlib and numpy these are things uh, just we are using for matplotlib I think this not necessary uh, okay let me uh, uncomment it okay uh, numpy is required because we are going to uh, like whatever image we are going to take with uh, like we are going to read with the cb2 first we'll uh, convert those images into a array format okay and after that uh, after the conversion into a array we'll resize that array to 224 cross 224 and after expanding the dimension okay we'll just uh, what we'll do uh, we'll just divide it by 255 so just to uh, scale down the uh, array values okay after that we'll pass this input data so this image to our model loaded model so loaded model is this one tumor underscore classifier underscore model so whatever value it will present so actually it is a binary binary classification and we have used sigmoid function so sigmoid always gives us a probability okay it, in terms of a, uh, it gives a value in terms of probability we won't get a value in terms of 0 and 1 so we have to define a threshold value after which after that point of a time we'll consider it as a yes or no this kind of a thing we have to define it okay it's a kind of a threshold value that we are going to define okay so what i did here i have taken uh, like a 0 0.5 as a threshold as of now if we got the value g greater than 0 0.5 so we can take it as a yes like person is having a tumor if no if uh, it is less than 0 0.5 so we can consider person is not having a tumor okay nothing else so i have uh, taken a data like a image from no i think yeah this one is no.jpg let me check uh, no issue I'll take another one okay let me take it I've already tested my model okay this is working perfectly fine you can see that okay so you can see uh, it's in the no class and it is able to recognize it no okay and if you want to see uh, what is what is the value it is going to predict okay what values it is giving so let me uh, tell you what is that let me run it so you can see that what value so you can see here the values we are getting is 0 0.005 so it is less than 0 0.05 so that's why it is printing now 
nothing else let me take one one yes one also so that will be better you will get a better clarity for that so let me take it then run it okay, so you can see get to a value yes and if I print product also so I got the value of 0 0.99 so that means it's a close to 1 but it's not 1 because I have already told you uh, sigmoid always gives us a pro the value in terms of probability okay that in terms of a floating point value you will get that value ranges in between 0 and 0 and 1 it won't give you the exact value 0 or 1 nothing else okay so I think uh, uh, this is uh, fine for this video okay uh, we can easily integrate this uh, project with the flask one and that project we can say it's the end to end so it is just uh, like a model training and saving the weight kind of a thing like most the major part we have already done okay uh, the and also whatever things we have to do after that that I have already uh, created a video for that like how we can uh, like a deploy our deep learning model with flask so you can watch that video and you will be able to deploy it easily okay so I guess uh, this is uh, fine for this video uh, thank you guys bye bye